Part two, why you should plan ahead with your kids in case of a fire. Cause one of them might be an idiot, like me. All right, so instead of running outside of the house, I ran back inside to my room. Why did I do this? Because guys, Simba was still in here. My stuffed animal lion. I was not going to let him burn. I still have him, wait. Oh my God. Yes, I ran back in the house for this guy, this noseless lion named Simba. Guys, The Lion King is my favorite movie and it still is. This guy meant so much to me. I risked my life for him. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad that I did. By this time, I tried to run back outside with Simba. My mother had extinguished the flames completely. There was still so much smoke everywhere. And we had forgotten that my sister was just sitting out there alone by herself. A seven or eight year old, I don't remember how old she was. We finally let her back inside the house, but opened all the doors because it was so smoky in there. So yeah. Okay, thank you, God bless. So around 10.30 last night, we get this knock on our door and it was our next door neighbor. We've known her for like nine years. Uh, we, 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 we know her a little bit, but not like deeply. So she says she's arguing with her husband and she doesn't want to sleep in the same house with him. And she said that she doesn't want to sleep in a hotel because of Corona. So my husband says she can sleep on the couch. And so in the middle of the night, we get these alerts into our phone for a wanted woman missing husband. It was her and her husband. So my husband calls the cops. I'm like freaking out so then we come downstairs when we start to hear the sirens and we notice the locks on the front and the back door are still locked so at this point unless she went through a window she is still in our home and we were freaking out because we have three little kids so we thought we should just be quiet and go back upstairs until the cops start knocking on the front door i was recently reminded of the fact that i accidentally rigged my junior year homecoming king vote <laughs> American schools, we have dances and then we vote for someone in that grade to become the king and queen of the dance. And I I don't know why. So in English, and they just give us slips of paper that says like, write down who you want in your grade of king and queen. So I'm sitting there like not caring about this at all. And so I say out loud, who would hate this the most? So I look to my left and there's it's Josh. And Josh hates everything and everyone. And so I say out loud, Josh would hate this. And he makes the fatal mistake of saying, you better not. And then everyone's like, that's a great idea. And they put Josh's name down. So a week later, they do morning announcements and the English class freaks out because Josh won. And everyone else in every other class is like, how? I don't think he ever forgave me for that. Put a finger down if it's the night before your one year anniversary. And you know that if you want to do anything special to celebrate, you're going to have to be the one to pay for it and plan it. Because for the 364 days you and your boyfriend have been together, he hasn't taken you out a single time. Like not even for your birthday did he do anything for you. And so you plan this really nice and expensive trip and you go over to his house the night before so you can surprise him the next morning. And the night before, right after he hooks up with you ladies, and I mean right after he hooked up with me, he kicked me out of his fucking house out of the blue and broke up with me. And so literally weeks go by, I hear nothing from him. I lose literally 20 pounds. I'm throwing up left and right. I cannot stop projectile vomiting from all the fucking anxiety he had given me. And then I finally snap out of it one day and I put on makeup for the first time in literally probably eight months because my ex also didn't let me wear makeup. And so I take a selfie and to my surprise, he hits me up from this selfie on my Snapchat with a message this long to say that this is the reason he broke up with me because only whores wear makeup. If you can solve this riddle, you're a genius. There was this woman and she was a serial killer. She would take men on dates and then poison them and kill them. One day she goes on a date with you. Ooh, but she can't go through with it because she's so in love with you. Eventually, you two end up getting married and you buy a house together. When you buy the house, she claims the basement for her work and she says that you're not allowed to go down there. You say okay and you're happily married. But as time goes on, you get really curious and one day she leaves her work and you decide to go downstairs and see what's down there. When you go downstairs, it's pitch black and you reach around the walls to see if there's a light switch to turn on, but there isn't. As you're feeling around the room, there's a light bulb above you that is unscrewed a little bit. You screw it in a little bit more to turn on the light. Immediately, you see all the dead bodies that she's ever killed and you're in shock as you're looking around for a while but then you hear her car pull up in the driveway and she's home from work you quickly unscrew the light bulb run upstairs and sit down when she gets home she goes downstairs to check on her dead bodies and she immediately knew that you were in there how did she know pause this video right now because i'm about to say the answer it was because the light bulb was still hot story time i babysat a lot of kids in my neighborhood and there was this one night that i was babysitting a two-year-old it was around 10 o'clock at night so the kid was sleeping and i was just sitting in the living room in the living room, there was a big TV, a couch, and then behind me, it was a wall with a giant window. So it was really late at night, I had nothing to do, so I was Snapchatting my friends. If you Snapchat anybody, I'm sure you know that sometimes you Snapchat really fast. You don't even know or look at what you're sending. 
I was mass snapping all my friends and then one of them replied 10 minutes later and he said, who's that guy behind you? And I turned around and no one was there. So I'm like, he's playing a joke on me. But then I get another Snapchat from this friend I had and she lives all the way across the country. They don't know each other. And she said, I think there's someone outside. So I was really freaked out because I was alone. There was a giant window behind me. Apparently there was someone outside. I wasn't gonna call the child's parents cause I didn't want to freak them out, but I was scared. So then I went around the house, locked all of the doors. Sorry, it's a really long story like for part two. Part two of the kids throwing paper balls at my friend's story. So when I told Damon this was happening and he didn't seem to notice, I was very confused. The kid that I used to know would not let this fly. He instead kept his head down, insisted that it was okay, and said that he was used to it. Whatever happened between eighth grade and now completely changed the way that he viewed this behavior. I saw it as unacceptable. He thought it was okay. So instead of accepting that, I turned around and said, Hey, what are we in fifth grade? The three boys looked at me from the top of the bleachers and said, Whatever. Cause that's what high schoolers who act like fifth graders say. And then I said, Stop it. It's not funny. They didn't stop. They laughed. But Damon thanked me. I didn't know who this kid was anymore. I can only assume that this type of stuff was happening to him often. That kids at his new school were treating him poorly. And because of that, he thought he was less than. I literally never saw Damon again after that day. But I hope that he knows that he can stand up for himself. And that that behavior is not okay. Be careful how you treat people. It stays with them. And it can fundamentally change them. Get them. Bye. Okay, part two. I honestly didn't expect to make two parts out of this. So my teacher was looking at me like so intensely while she was taking off her shoe. And I was so confused. Um, Miss Whatever Your Name Is, because I don't remember. What are you doing? And she goes, don't move. And I, I start panicking. But I do what she says. I do what she says. Like, she gets her shoe. She holds it up to here. And then she throws it at me. And I literally jumped. She hit me in the bottom half of my dress. The shoe went flying. You know what else went flying? Right next to her shoe was the giantest spider I have ever seen in my life. I think it was a tarantula. Which would have been fine because tarantulas are pretty much harmless. But at the time, both her and I were freaking out. <gasps> she literally knocked the spider out. Her aim was so good. I'm actually amazed right now. She's like, oh my god, I saw that on your dress when you came in and I had to get it off. I was like, thank you. Yeah, I had no idea that was on there. So I retired that dress. No more dresses to school. Not for Joe. Thanks for watching, Joe Demo. You guys, this is the reason why I never wore big dresses to school. Let me set the scene for you. Fourth grade Joe, nine years old, super perky and happy to be wearing a giant dress to school. You know, I don't know why I was. Maybe we had just gotten it. I was super excited about it. It was like a Wednesday. I was probably like, Ma, I want to wear this dress. And since I was mainly tomboyish my entire life, she was probably like, yes, wear it. So I took it to school. Oh. So I took it to school. It made playtime a little complicated, but that's fine. Recess was fine. I was one of those kids who liked to roll around in the dirt, climb trees, all that jazz. And I'm like, it's just a dress. It'll be fine. So it's time for like nutrition class. I don't know. They're trying to teach us about like pyramids and like food groups. My teacher starts looking at me funny. And then she kind of just says to the entire class, Josedak? And I'm like, is it Josedak? Can you, can you come with me outside for a second? I'm like, yeah, sure. Fourth grade me just comes with her outside. And when we're outside, she closes the door. And I'm like, huh. She slowly takes off her shoe. I was like, oh, look for part two. So when I was younger, I used to scrunch my hair all the time, which is when your hair is wet and you take a bunch of gel and you go like this. Well, my mom thought it was so pretty. So she came to me one day and was like, hey, do you think you could scrunch my hair before work tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. But why don't we practice tonight to make sure it doesn't look stupid? Make sure it looks good, you know? And she's like, no, like, I don't have time for that. We'll just do it in the morning. And I was like, all right, fine, your call. So the next morning she comes out, her hair is completely dry. And I'm like, mom, you know, your hair needs to be wet before we do this. And she's like, no, I took a shower last night. It's fine. Just do it, Laura. And I was like, all right fine well I do it right and it looks horrible like crispy ramen noodles okay she goes to work she doesn't have time to fix it, by the way so she goes to work and people are like hey did you get caught in the rain they're emailing her pictures of wet dogs all day making fun of her and she's like oh my god I'm so embarrassed she's texting me I'm so embarrassed I can't believe you messed up my hair like this she tries to brush it out makes it 10 times worse she's like you did this to me on purpose and I'm like you know what you need to stop asking me to do your hair for you please do it yourself I am going to be telling you a scary childhood story. When I was two years old, my mom passed away. My dad wasn't in the picture, so I went to go live with my grandparents. My grandparents lived in a super old home that was built in the 1800s. I was a very imaginative child. So when I told my grandparents that I used to see people in the house, they just didn't believe me. There was one lady in particular that I would always see. She would sit at the end of my bed and watch me fall asleep. I wasn't scared of her because I thought she was an actual person. Plus, I was super little, so nothing even crossed my mind. At this point, I was like four or five years old. I remember her talking to me constantly. She even sang me the song rock Baby to get me to go to bed one night. Every single day when I would get home, I could see her in my window, 
At that point, I thought she was just waiting for me. She just wanted to be my friend, right? But as I got older, things started to get really weird between me and her. She wasn't this nice lady anymore. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two of the lady in my room who would sing me lullabies to get me to go to bed. No one else in my family could see her. She even told me that she was my mom. I really believed her. If you remember, my mom passed away when I was two. So, I mean, it seemed pretty real that it was my mom. I didn't really remember what my mom's face looked like when she passed away. And this lady, you know, could be my mom. She continued to sing me lullabies every single night when I would go to bed. She would always be waiting for me in the window when I would get home from school. But I figured out pretty quickly it wasn't my mom. My mom was a sweet, kind-hearted person. This spirit was evil. She would get mad at me every single time any of my friends would come over. She told me she could see my future and that I was going to go to hell after I died in a car accident. It scared me so much, but no one believed me. It got to the point where I never even wanted to go in the car because I thought I was going to die. She convinced me I was evil. Stay tuned for part three that's coming tonight. You guys. This is why I always check myself before I leave any bathroom. Okay. You guys always ask what's my most embarrassing story, and I finally remembered what it was. The reason I think I forgot is because I repressed this so much. It is my mission in life to never allow this to happen again. Let's set the scene. So a few years ago, I was at church. I don't know if it was like a regular Sunday or a conference. I don't know what. My church can have services up to like four hours long. So I just went to the bathroom for a little me time. Wasn't in there a lot long. Now, I'm not a hoverer. I know most girls are, but I prefer to use the toilet cover. But my church doesn't have one of those. So instead, I kind of made one. I used like four pieces of toilet paper, lined the toilet seat, I wouldn't be touching the actual seat. Okay, job well done. When my me time was over, flush the toilet, wash my hands, make sure my hair looks okay, all is well. Now I'm alone in the bathroom, halfway through the service. The bathrooms at my church are in the lobby. When I exited the bathroom to go back into the church, there are these doors I need to go through. There are also ushers there to open the door for you. There's usually an unnecessary amount, like two or four. Thank goodness there was a girl there. Fall for part two. This is part two of my most embarrassing story. <laughs> okay, so I was walking out trying to get back to my seat and then I feel a tap on my shoulder. This is right when I got past the door. A woman who was standing near the door pointed out that there was a piece of toilet paper on my butt, just chilling there. I grabbed it and it was like a whole thing of it. In the moment, I didn't feel like true embarrassment. Like right now, I grabbed it and kind of like rolled it up. My face was like so emotionless. I was like, I just kind of just put the toilet paper in my pocket and just walked away now. Every time I go to the bathroom, I check. I check that I'm good. I be doing this. You ain't ever gonna catch that. Mm, you ain't ever gonna catch me like that again. Mm. But yeah, thank you to that lady. Put a finger down if in high school you had a YouTube channel and your whole school knew about it so you weren't embarrassed. And one day when you were sitting in your first period class, a girl came up to you and asked you why you were promoting your YouTube channel in the girl's washroom. And you had no idea what she was talking about. So obviously you ran to the washroom to investigate and you found that written on the back of every single bathroom stall door was your YouTube channel and comments about how you were so amazing and beautiful and how everyone should subscribe to you. And this was really embarrassing because everyone was accusing you of writing these things, but you weren't. So you wrote a message back and asking this person to stop writing these things. And then the next day you found that they had leaked your personal information and written down your address on the bus that you take to school. So now you're really creeped out and you were scared that someone was stalking you. So you and your friends were determined to figure out who this person was. And the next day when you went to school, you all hid in a different washroom of the school trying to catch this person red-handed. And while you were hiding in the washroom, you noticed that a girl came out without flushing and she was holding a red marker. So you knew that you had caught her red-handed. So you followed her out of the washroom and you and all your friends went up to her and asked her if she was the one that had been writing on the bathroom stall. Like for a part two, it gets so good. We never lie, we never lie, we never lie, never lie, we never lie, we never lie, we never lie, never So around 10 30 last night we get this knock on our door and it was our next door neighbor we've known her for like nine years uh we, we 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 know her a little bit but not like deeply so she says she's arguing with her husband and she doesn't want to sleep in the same house with him and she said that she doesn't want to sleep in a hotel because of corona so my husband says she can sleep on the couch and so in the middle of the night we get these alerts into our phone for a wanted woman missing husband 
it was her and her husband. So my husband calls the cops. I'm like freaking out. So then we come downstairs when we start to hear the sirens. And we notice the locks on the front and the back door are still locked. So at this point, unless she went through a window, she is still in our home. And we were freaking out because we have three little kids. So we thought we should just be quiet and go back upstairs until the cops start knocking on the front door. part two i honestly didn't expect to make two parts out of this so my teacher was looking at me like so intensely while she was taking off her shoe and i was so confused um uh, miss whatever your name is because i don't remember what are you doing and she goes don't move and I, I start panicking but i do what she says i do what she says like she gets her shoe she holds it up to here and then she throws it at me and i literally jumped she hit me in the bottom half of my dress the shoe went flying you know what else went flying right next to her shoe was the giantest spider i have ever seen in my life I think it was a tarantula, which would have been fine because tarantulas are pretty much harmless. But at the time, both her and I were freaking out. <gasps> she literally knocked the spider out. Her aim was so good. I'm actually amazed right now. She's like, oh my God, I saw that on your dress when you came in and I had to get it off. I was like, thank you. Yeah, I had no idea that was on there. So I retired that dress. No more dresses to school, not for Joe. Thanks for watching, Jotemo.